we're live. We are live on this Monday morning to talk about Law 42 from the 48 Laws of Power. I forgot to put my phone on silence. Okay. Let me do that. Law 42 um, is strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Trouble can often be traced to a single strong individual, the stirrer, the arrogant underling, the poisoner of goodwill. If you allow such people room to operate, others will succumb to their influence. Do not wait for, their, for the troubles they cause to multiply. Do not try to negotiate with them. They are irredeemable. Neutralize their influence by isolating or banishing them. Strike at the source of the trouble and the sheep will scatter. And that's Law 42 from the 48 Laws of Power. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm. <clears throat> it, what, have you have you seen this take place at all? Have you seen something like this, um, you know, in real life, where somebody's removed from an organization because they were? I mean, <clears throat> he's not using the word toxic, but a poisoner of goodwill or something like that. I have. I've seen it in business. I've seen it in schools. So it does happen. And, and um, <clears throat> you know, he's talking about removing them. And the implication is you get rid of them, right? But it doesn't mean you take them out or kill them. But you just dethrone them. You get rid of them from that position. You you know, isolate them or you send them abroad, or you send them far, or if he's in a position of power that he has gained by getting voting rights or whatever, you remove him from that position, him or her. There's a lot of female strong character that have, and so what ends up happening is, in my humble point of view, the entire progress loses momentum because you take away the leadership the person that has the magnetism yeah the person him or her that has the charisma unites if you take that person out the you, sheep will scatter that's right i have seen before uh where there's a riot and people study it because there's cameras so there's a protest going on and the the law enforcement or whoever it is, is able to identify first, they're able to identify the person leading or the people leading this protest, and they pick them out. And once those people, whether they had the microphone or they were somebody that had a following of some sort, are removed from that, it like diffuses the whole protest. Recently, we were talking to a good friend of ours uh, who was... Uh, was share, you know, I asked him because he goes often to Cuba and he's Cuban, right? Mm -hmm. And I was asking about the uh, protests that were occurring on the island uh, just a couple years ago, July 11th. And um, he said that a lot of people, because millions of people took to the streets to protest the situation in Cuba. And he said that what happened was they just, they took out the organizers. They threw them in jail. It took out a lot of people, but especially the organizers. So yeah. when you do that, you completely diffuse, it. diffuse the momentum. Yeah. That's right. They lose the momentum. Look, one of the things that comes to mind right now that just happened, I think this just happened on March 9th. Today is the 18th, okay? Nine days ago. It's that whistleblower for Boeing. Oh, yeah. Whew. Okay. Now, that guy has gone through depositions. He talked to the attorneys. He created a lawsuit. He worked for 32 years at Boeing and retired. And, you know, he, I'm 65, and I believe the gentleman it was 62. And then he's spearheading this issue. He was a, I believe he was in the quality control department of Boeing. Okay? Now, he was 
suing them and a whistleblower and saying that the standards are this and there's a lot of stuff if you keep up with the uh, news happening to the jets like every other day something's happening you know leakage of gas they lose a door i mean it's scary okay yeah this gentleman was found as the report says unalive in other words he was found dead okay apparently in questionable conditions i don't know enough about it okay but what i do know is that with this gentleman gun all this momentum of checking into boeing's you know standards mm. and this or that it's going to suffer well you also make a i mean you, let's say you're questioning the man's death right well the timing right couldn't be more right because I, i think mean, it was the day before he was going into court it was like um yeah i it, the other thing is that if you were going to take this guy out and we don't know anything about nothing okay mm -hmm. but you you would do it before all the depositions it's my understanding that he had already been deposed by all the attorneys so you have all that on record mm -hmm. now i don't know him not being there if there are signatures that are required by him that he's no longer around whatever yeah. i'm sure the process is going to hit a wall or several but what ex what example does it make about anyone else who wants to be a whistleblower or right well talk yeah. about a look at that guy company. in what in euro hazan or what what was the guy that uh, leaked there's a couple there's a wikileaks was WikiLeaks. julian assange yeah yeah so so yeah. yeah you get rid of them you you um isolate them and they lose all their power that's right i mean they're just trying to survive now at that point and um yeah i think robert green with this law um he he brought up that back in the day let's say you could actually send some like you were a king or something you could send somebody in isolation exile exile know. yeah they did it to napoleon right they put him in an island right um and but, he came back and he came back but um <clears throat> when we're modern times you know and he used Ath uh the greeks the athenians the athenians right. as an example where you had to it was a democracy at that point you couldn't just you were you couldn't just publicly send somebody off isolation so they created this way of voting right so yeah. each city was able to vote who they wanted to ban right Banish. it was called the astrakhan and that gave the power to the people right right so it's interesting i think that um So just so that the viewers know, the Astrakhan mm -hmm. was created in Athens and they put the the vote to the people who they wanted to isolate or send to exile for 10 years. And if you have more than 6,000 ballots <laughs> and the name was of that person on the 6,000 ballots, gone for 10 years. Or if they didn't reach the 6,000, they would tally up who was the most on the ballots. And that's, by the way, the word ostracize comes from that. Wow. Which I thought was very interesting. The little trivia kind of there. Yeah. So, and if you look it up, it, it talks about banishing somebody or a group of people that, uh, you know, are, uh, you know, they're just ostracized, you know, they just pushed away. Yeah. Um, very interesting. I <laughs> think that... Um like even in a work setting like you said that you have people that are toxic you know and i've been in organizations where you have to get rid of that person because it begins to spread we've all i'm sure encountered that oh yeah um the bad habits begin to spread so you have to you have to get rid of that absolutely you know another thing that comes to mind for me is you know i've been in business now 40 years But when I started, I was very, very new. And you know, when, when people start, they look to the people, the men or women that have some kind of leadership qualities, have been around, you know, so forth. And I remember going to meetings at uh, this major company that I started with, a Fortune 500 company. And there were a couple of people in the meetings mm -hmm. that were very outspoken, okay? 
because things were changing even then when I got started and programs were being changed, this and that. And there were a few people in these meetings that were very outspoken and would not, they would confront the speaker, okay, back then. One of the things that I noticed after, the, after a few of those is that the company shortened the meetings with a number of people. They were no longer these, uh, let's say, Southern California versus Northern California. Now they became districts. Oh, smaller groups. Smaller groups. They became districts, you know? And so there were the di dissemination of uh, information was given in meetings of 20 people as opposed to 200 people. Right. Okay? Where these vociferous folks that wouldn't take baloney because they knew what they were talking about they didn't like the changes or whatever were able to expose their view against the speaker in front of two three hundred people so one of the things that this company did was created districts which shrank the number of people per meeting it's smart it's like psych it's psychology smart. yeah and i remember trying to go to the meeting where some of these guys were going to and I was not allowed to because it wasn't, quote, unquote, my district. So, you know, I lived that. And it's very interesting. Yeah, they want to control the uh, people speaking out and they want to have control of the meeting. Right. You and I went to a uh, meeting once uh, in Burbank, I believe. Oh, my God, yeah. And they were selling the idea of drop shipping, Amazon drop shipping, all these things, right? And they had rented out a hotel uh, lobby, uh, not lobby, but the 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 rooms for banquet rooms and yeah. things like that. And this guy was uh, up on stage and talking about all the drop shipping, this and that. And then as they get into it, it was I think a two day thing. Yeah. As they get into it. Um, they start asking basically the way that you would pay for their program, right? To teach you. Well, first we paid a thousand dollars because we looked at our schedule <laughs> and we said, Hey, we're not doing anything that weekend. Let's just give it a shot. So we paid a thousand dollars to attend this weekend thing. And that didn't include hotel or anything. Okay. And a bunch of people went and then, and then as the meeting progressed, they said, okay, to, sign up for these uh, programs. We're going to teach you how to drop ship. And we got all these people making money. You know, one of them was like $25,000. Another one was like $50,000 for that program membership. Crazy. And what they were doing was they sent out these applications to everybody. And maybe let's say there were like 50 people in that were watching there to learn. And they were credit applications. It was asking for your social security, birthday, everything so they can run your credit because what they were doing is they were pulling out some sort of credit on you. To, to see if you to, could pay for the programs. To pay for the programs, yeah. And you and I said, mm, no, you know, we weren't comfortable with that. And we were already starting to feel like this was a weird vibe, these guys. And sure enough, we be, people were also asking us, oh, you're not going to fill it out? I remember somebody, oh, you're not going to fill it out? No, I don't feel comfortable with that. Oh, yeah, I don't either, this and that. So it started spreading. We were the, in the we were in this, to these people who were con artists, the poisoners of goodwill. Yeah. <laughs> and so they were actually con artists. They and were, they took us out. And they removed us. And that's what I'm getting to. They, after the first day, they came up to us and said, hey, we noticed, you know, maybe you're not feeling that you're getting your money worth out of here, this and that. Um, we can refund you entirely, no problem. If And we, you and I said we would think about it that night and we would let them know the following morning. And we showed up the following morning and we told them we didn't want in anymore. We weren't going to join. but uh, And they said, we'll refund you, and they never refunded That's us. That's right. But they, they flat out lied. They removed us. That's right. They removed us. I mean, we weren't the shepherd, but we were dissent. <laughs> we were questioning. We were dissension. Yeah. We were questioning what they were doing, their tactics and all that. And yeah, a lot it of. Just, it just, you know, I didn't like the pitches, how they were being thrown out. And I, the 
yeah it was it was being pushed and a lot of people there i don't think had a lot of resources no i don't so they were kind of preying on people yeah, i think they were preying on people and yeah. taking advantage of people it was terrible and it's a it was a bad but that to you reminded me when you were talking about the meeting how they control the group that's what they did they just removed us and they they took us out and they said we'll refund you the money and i remember calling those 800 numbers and talking to them hey you said this man i've got it in you know like yeah. at this time and this date this yeah. guy he was the leader he was the presenter he said he would refund we never got a penny i ended up giving up on it, you know and i was diligent about it i called quite a few times and you know but yeah so you know that's the kind we've been exposed to that yeah they took our money our um, time our time um we went, we, we scheduled the hotel, we stayed there. You know, yeah. um, I remember driving back on Sunday and stopping by the office. And one of our co-workers was there, your sister. And she was Stop. working on a Sunday. And um, she says, aren't you guys supposed to be in? Yeah, but we didn't feel good about it and we left. But they said that we're, they're going to give us our money back. But you know what that does to people? Because I felt robbed, of course, of the money. But more than that, I lost my faith in a lot of these programs that you see out there. And yeah, I my heart goes out to those people that, you know, get taken by some of this because mm -hmm. you're right. I'm sorry. You're right. I think that a lot of those folks yeah. uh, didn't have a lot of resources, but they believed in that program. They believed in that right. presenter, and they were getting themselves into debt. Yeah, and they were uh, they were they were being swindled. Yeah, manipulated. Um, you and I have been involved in many presentations where they're pitching us multi-level marketing. You know, and the vibe is sometimes like that, too. So, you know, it's you just got to be careful. Um, I think that this law is really good to be able to to notice when somebody, let's say, is a potential problem or if they're doing this to you. And that's what Robert Green says. You know, notice if somebody's trying to isolate you because you've gained too much power and they're trying to turn people against you. And um, I really like the example that he used of Erickson, that psychologist. Okay. And he, he says that Erickson would do like a family psychology, a family um, practice. Uh -huh. And he would bring in the family, but the one that he knew was problematic and troublesome, he would purposely seat, seat them a couple feet away from the others. He would isolate them. And then he he would slowly explain and the family would begin to see that that person was the problem. You know, they were too close to it, let's say. But it's interesting, you know, little things like that. But yeah, we have to notice when people are trying to pull us out of something or you have to notice when there are people who are toxic and maybe you need to remove them from an organization. I remember working for for you and mom at, at a time where there was a lady who was really toxic and eventually you did let her go but that was she was there for a while <laughs> it was brutal it was brutal <clears throat> it was brutal and her and i never really had it out because she kind of i felt she kind of knew with me we i wasn't really gonna play the games but she would fight with other employees, you know? And like, uh, what is it? Uh, she would get feisty, uh, feisty with people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's never fun letting go of someone. Yeah. I'm here to tell you. It's one of the hardest things that I ever done. Letting go of an employee. You don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, that's why they say, you know, be careful when you hire, you know? Quick to hire. No. Slow to hire, Slow to quick hire. to fire. Quick to fire. Um, 
the problem is with me pulling the trigger on the firing end <laughs> it's very difficult okay very very difficult but um if you don't do it then what ends up happening is that those bad vibes end up you know intoxicating you know the rest of the crowd potentially yeah, yeah. um and that's a person that's toxic now the you know it because the law says you know strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter yeah but what if the shepherd has good intentions and his um progress is for the good of the people right okay then now you're talking about the powers that be that are in control that don't want that correct you know like for example this whistleblower apparently his intentions were good because he, he, all he was saying is that the standards were lower we yeah. need to bring the standards back up same with uh and he's gone now same with the uh cuba situation all those people marching uh protesting on the streets millions of people well, they're starving there yeah and there's no food nothing but it's against right. what the government wants to go down there yeah it was uh it was july 11th of 2021 and um it they got rid of it the people in power got rid of that right so they got rid right because they took off the few leaders and boom put them in jail the, the entire movement loses the momentum now i do think this is a really a cool quote that robert green says he's you know he's saying don't try to negotiate with them mm. <laughs> you you just gotta isolate them and remove them because a lot of times i think we we spend the time and the energy let's say that somebody is uh, toxic to an environment to try and change that person or negotiate with them but they go back to their ways yeah he says they're not redeemable no yeah you know it's like the other day we were having breakfast with your buddy and all of a sudden he said something and i said look i'm going to tell you something that took me 18 years to learn mm -hmm. and i'm going to tell you right now in the next two minutes it took me 18 years to learn this well the same thing goes with this how hard is it you know i mean as a business owner you want to pick the best person possible you you have questionnaires up the yin yang you you know you have Interviews. one meeting whatever i i think that what patrick was doing at one time was pretty cool which was he had one level entry person interview the potential employee and if it passed with that person then it went to another person and then that particular person had another interview with that same potential employee from a different perspective where do you see yourself in five years where do you see the first one was okay this is you're thinking about doing this what are your qualifications so you qualify then you get a little bit more into the mind of the person and then the final interview was with Patrick Redini so whoever was going to get hired for that company had to go through yeah. three layers okay mm -hmm. the first two were from a different perspectives and then the final interview was with the owner Patrick Redini and if he thought that it wasn't a click he wouldn't hire them no matter what happened here mm -hmm. straight A's on the first meeting straight A's on the second meeting but if they didn't jive with Patrick then he they he wouldn't hire them and I think that that's a good way to remove yourself but see small business doesn't have that ability and he didn't have that ability until he got very you know you wealthy. can you you could create something like that but it's more it's difficult it's just Difficult. takes extra steps yeah um and it means you have more people on payroll yeah. so you gotta have more revenue so you can't a small business that opens up you know yeah you're doing everything you're doing initially. everything yourself yeah and literally because yeah. I remember opening up and at the end of the day throwing out the trash cleaning the office to make sure that the following morning was nice you yeah. know and I, I was doing evidences and I was doing quoting so when yep. you open up you're a one-man show kind of thing yep it was a blessing when i was able to hire my first secretary 
<clears throat> you know how uh, how many years in was that do you remember oh no i had to hire her immediately oh okay yeah because fortunately for so me so the I started year doing... you started you hired a secretary oh yeah i think six months in oh wow yeah I, I was very fortunate the good lord smiled on me and i was able to generate business and um oh yeah i needed help right away mm -hmm. first your mom was helping me and it became too much and she said you need somebody here yeah i guess what ended what i wasn't being efficient i was i yeah. was all over the place and well some people stay in that situation they don't delegate they don't bring somebody on because they're they feel they're taking in less when it's the opposite bringing somebody on to help you allows you to take on more you're right but it's difficult to see at that moment yeah <laughs> and when you're depending on every nickel and dime that comes in yeah because when i started my first business i only had 212 dollars in my bank account after i paid the lease so there was no money to speak of i had 200 bucks in my account i i couldn't even buy a, a, an extra set of desk and chairs fortunately the company uh, was providing it but even that was late so you know but it was a fortune 500 company you know and they had an allowance uh, for furniture yeah but i opened my doors and i had 200 dollars in my bank account so any any issue i wouldn't have been able to we didn't have fax machines back then, but a fax machine would have been easily 200 bucks. That would have depleted my entire, but we didn't have fax machines. This was uh, like in the dark age 40 years ago. <laughs> you didn't have, you started in 87? 86. 86. 86. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot has happened since then, but yeah. it's difficult to do, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And and oh, another thing that's difficult to do is to delegate. Because you think, oh, nobody's going to do the job like me. And you're probably right. But then it's like Patrick would say, what, what kind of job do you want to do? Do you want to do $40 an hour job or $500 an hour job? What are you, what are you going to do? What are you best suited for? Right. And you got to get to know yourself and you know grow like that but we're getting away from the law you know but i remember those meetings were huge you know two three hundred people and then all of a sudden districts were created and then you could only attend the meeting that was earmarked for your district yeah because i remember i kept the names of those uh outspoken ones that were really smart and sharp they've been around already one of the guys when i started had been with the company i think for six years already so he's seen a lot. And so he was yeah. very uh, boisterous. Yeah, the older guys who don't want to put up anymore with the changes that came in because it's not the company that it was when, when they started. Right. And so they have this nostalgia along with they feel it's not as good as it was before. But it seems that that's always the case with, yeah. in different industries in different companies it seems that it's always was always better back then was always better 10 years ago five years ago i don't know why you know i think that look at the way we're living today inflation is through the roof so the cost of everything it's gone way up yeah just this morning i was talking to your brother and he did something at his house and you know even though he did it himself the material alone went you know super high right yeah so what ends up happening is that some companies do not have enough uh capital to forgive the quality in other words if you compromise the quality of your product because you don't have enough revenue it can be the beginning of the end. Well, I think that's what's that's what's happening everywhere. In a, in many places, yeah. unfortunately. I mean, I have a I took a screenshot of uh, something that I thought was really interesting. I might not find it now, but it had to do with wood, a two by four in twenty twenty four as opposed to a two by four in whatever year it was, 
let's say the the seventies or the sixties. I'm not sure what. Oh, here it is. Oh no, here it is. Okay, a two by four in 2018 and a two by four in 1918. Oh my goodness! And you see the difference in the quality of the wood. And it's saying here, clarification, these two pieces of lumber come from two different trees. The expert in the attached article is not comparing the lumber of the same tree over time. He's comparing the lumber that was commonly used to build houses 75 years ago versus the lumber commonly used to build houses today. And our good friend who is now past, um, Antonio, I remember him telling me these new houses that they're building, <laughs> these big old track homes and developments, the termites eat through that wood because of the quality of that wood. They're just concerned about putting it up and get, and selling it, the developer. And in those, he was saying that the quality of the wood, they eat through it like bread, the termites. Well, As opposed to before, you would use, I'm not the expert in it, a red wood or a different type of wood that, wood that was harder for them to eat. Anyways, um, one th last thing I wanted to throw in. Well, was uh, Hernan Cortez, how he removed Montezuma. Right. And that's another example of history, if you guys don't know it, where you you take the shepherd, the leader of the pack, Montezuma, and the sheep will scatter. And that's what he did. And you're talking about <laughs> hundreds of thousands of Indians. Montezuma was the leader. I mean, he had what three hundred thousand warriors or something oh, like I that. Don't, I a don't know. huge amount. It was compared to. I think Hernan Cortes had like ninety people or a hundred and ten, something like that. And he yeah. took down an empire of three hundred thousand or more. I forget the. You guys. Check what were it. they? Aztecs. Yeah. They were Aztecs. Yeah. yeah. Montezuma. So. Anything else you want to throw in? No, you know it's very interesting. You know, um, we're facing um, interesting times where if you can find a place that still holds that degree of sacredness for quality, okay? If they can still afford it, there'll be far and few in between. You see all these uh, restaurants closing down. And I'm concentrating on restaurants because food is extremely important because we are what we eat. We have to be very careful what we put in our bodies. And so um, if you find that little hole in the wall that's still precious enough to... Like I remember going to Big Bear and there's a pie company out there and they only sell 200 pies a day or 100 pies a day. But when they are done with, with that order, they close down. And the pies are fantastic. They cost a lot. But I remember going there like at 11 in the morning and they were already close because they had sold their 100 pies or whatever it is that they make every day. And the, and the public knows, you know. Quality. And quality. You're getting a good product. Right. And what they've done to protect themselves a little bit, they've had people come in and say, I'll buy your 100 pies. And they say, oh, no, only five pies per family. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's because if so, not... People would be buying it and then selling it. Oh, Have you oh seen... I wasn't thinking of that, but yeah, that's a good point. Like that one, uh, that one, um, it, it's an, it's a video where these two people are next to each other selling something. Watermelons. Watermelons. And then one guy sees that what the guy's price is next door. So he lowers it. He, no, he, um, no, he sees what the price is next door, and he says, "Hey, can I'll buy all your watermelons." Well, what he happens buys them all. is that one of six dollars, one is five dollars, and the other is six. So then he lowers his price, okay, so that he could sell more of his. And then the guy says, "Oh, okay, you lowered your price. Okay, I'll buy all of them from you." And he buys them all, and then he raises his price again. He doubled his price because no longer <laughs> no competition. That's crazy, but hey, that is basic. Well put, right? Yeah. I think that these laws, we there we encounter them every day, especially if you're dealing with people, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're dealing whether a business setting or negotiation or or even in family, and you have to figure out how to maneuver uh, amongst these laws. And you know, where this is the forty second law. I mean, Robert Greene has put together forty eight of these, which um, 
I think are super important. Like if we, if I didn't know about these laws, I wouldn't understand. I think a lot of the games and things that that take place in yeah. life, these power moves, I wouldn't understand it. But I do understand um, when he brings up these examples of like, no matter what, power concentrates between one to two people. That's it. Like at the end of the day, power usually lies in the hands of maybe one person. Even in a democracy and all these things that we've implemented to try and spread the power. You, you know, you look at an organization, a business, there's one person who holds the power. Typically. So it's just interesting knowing that, okay, that person's the master. Don't outshine them. But... I need to understand all the dynamics, everything that's happening here. Because to get to that position, they probably understand the laws. Yeah, well, I think so. <laughs> Robert Greene says that some people don't need to read his book. Yeah. They have an innate ability. It's in their DNA. Mm -hmm. The 48 laws are within them. It depends yeah. on the aggressiveness. Look, there's a, um, and I know we're going on, but on the internet, and I'm on the internet way too much for my own good. Uh, on the internet, there's uh, uh, a scene where, and it says the caption, how different people handle the same situation. And they're in a golf uh, course, and there's an alligator just off one of the uh, holes or something. And one guy is walking. The minute that he sees the alligator, he goes, oh, my God. And he kind of like runs a little bit, not running exactly, but a fast walk away from the elevator, uh, the alligator where another guy comes up to it you know sees the alligator goes up to the alligator and just taps him on the tail and the alligator just goes right into the pond that's in there and so the caption was the way people handle different situations jeez so you take the leader out it's going to be very difficult to replace that leader like this immediately yeah or quickly and not have the entire process lose any kind of momentum or fuff or something. You know? Yeah. It, it, it does happen. In fact, I have, I'm watching a, um, Netflix thing where the, the CEO of the company, um, they drop some steel beams on him and he's in the hospital, he's in a coma, but they're thinking that he might be okay. But in the process, the entire company and there had been meetings with other people saying oh no no we're as strong as we ever were mm. okay he's there he's going to come out this is temporary but in the meantime we're going to conduct business as usual uh-uh all kinds of stuff are going wrong there are all kinds of things that are going wrong that it's not happening wow yeah and there's mafia and stuff like that in there and you know but uh yeah it's just an example very cool. Very cool. Good right. laws. We're yeah. coming to the end of the laws. Yes, yes. So we're we figuring need to out figure out what we're gonna do. Our next move. Our subscribers can please let us know what they want to see or hear. Yeah, yeah. We've been getting good comments and yeah. feedback. And um thank you everybody for listening. Thank you. Cool. All right. <laughs>